As impactful and transformational as the Supreme Court's ruling on overturning Roe is, as we've talked about, it's really not that surprising. And that's because this decision was leaked back in May. In its draft form, but perhaps what is surprising is the final version, the Supreme Court's majority opinion, actually stuck very closely to what was written in that draft. That means despite all the drama and hubbub surrounding the leak, the conservative justices were not forced to bow to pressure. It seems you could argue they were locked in by the leak or simply dug in their heels despite it. But let's discuss what did change in the actual text of the decision over the last month and a half. Perhaps the most significant difference in the wording of this final version authored by Justice Samuel Alito was the head note or syllabus of the opinion, which simply summarizes the court's findings. It was not included in the draft opinion. Here it is, quote, the Constitution does not confer a right to abortion. Roe and Casey are overruled, and the authority to regulate abortion is returned to the people and their elected representatives. Hard to be any clearer than that. The liberal justice's dissenting opinion was also released along with the majority decision. Predictably, of course, Justices Breyer, Sonia Sotomayor, and Elena Kagan were scathing in their response. Now, a new and bare majority of this court acting at practically the first moment possible overrules Roe and Casey. It converts a series of dissenting opinions expressing antipathy towards Roe and Casey into a green lighting, even total abortion bans. It eliminated a 50 year old constitutional right that safeguards women's freedom and equal access station. It breaches a core rule of law principle designed to promote consistency in the law. In doing all of that, it places in jeopardy other rights from contraception to same-sex intimacy and marriage, and finally it undermines the court's legitimacy. The final majority opinion also contains a retort from Alito to the liberal justice's dissent. Quote, the dissent is very candid that it cannot show that a constitutional right to abortion has any foundation, let alone a deeply rooted one in this nation's history and tradition. The dissent does not identify any pre-Roe authority that supports such a right. No state constitutional provision or statute, no federal or state judicial precedent, not even a scholarly treatise. The dissent's failure to engage with this long tradition is devastating to its position. The dissent cannot establish that a right to abortion has ever been part of this nation's tradition. And we finally got a window into Justice Roberts' thinking with his concurring opinion that was released along with the majority decision. Roberts voted with the majority, but was critical of their overturning of Roe. Roberts, who is known for advocating judicial restraint, argued that while he was in favor of upholding the Mississippi ban, he would have preferred a more measured approach when it came to expanding this ruling to Roe. Here's the Chief Justice. The court's decision to overrule Roe and Casey is a serious jolt to the legal system. Regardless of how you view those cases, a narrower decision rejecting the misguided viability line would be markedly less unsettling, and nothing more is needed to decide this case. With that, and we look now forward for the legal impact of the majority opinion, how it differs from the original leaked draft version, is Rachel Reboche, Temple University law professor and interim dean. Good to see you, Rachel. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, the one thing we didn't talk about in the intro was Justice Thomas's uh, discussion and uh, concurring opinion in which he said, all right, great, abortion's overturned. Now let's move on to Griswold, uh, Lawrence, um, and Oberfeld. So that's uh, gay marriage, uh, that's contraceptive, and that's also uh, sodomy laws that now would be back on, back for the Supreme Court to decide next, right? So I think if Justice Thomas had his way, um, that's certainly what the court would do next. It would look at all the cases that have been decided on the, under the 14th Amendment that touch on intimacy or privacy, liberty, family relationships, and it would, it would review those uh, decisions and uh, with the same kind of analysis that Justice Alito applied. Was there a history and tradition that supported constitutional protection for marriage, for procreation, for uh, no forced sterilization? Uh, Justice Thomas suggests that 
some of those rights would have uh, bases in other protections of the Constitution. But I think that he is, he's revealing what, uh, what was the criticism of the dissent of the majority opinion that Justice Alito wrote, which is, how do you just draw the line at abortion? Um, if this is a test we use to determine what the Constitution protects and does not protect, it's not at all clear that contraceptives aren't, for instance, um, also uh, uh, on the chopping block for the next uh, time the court considers uh, the issue of birth control. All right, so we now have the Wild West in terms of laws, right? Every state's going to have to uh, come up with their own law on this. We had Ken Paxton on a couple of hours ago, the Texas Attorney General, who says, all right, uh, yes, I would defend a uh, sodomy law if Texas once again put it on the books. Yes, I'm going to go after corporations who go ahead and pay or offer to pay for travel for abortions. If they're Texas-based, we're going to fine them uh, as well. I feel like there's there's a lot more sort of unknown unknowns to quote Donald Rumsfeld than there are known knowns. So I think that's right as well. And so, um, you know, I, I, I've argued that uh, the idea that overturning Roe and Casey creates more workable, this is Justice Alito's argument, one reason to overturn precedent is that those cases created unworkable standards that created chaos and litigation and confusion and fact-based tests that were inconsistently applied. But, you know, th that is, um, that's nothing in comparison to what's to come. As each state uh, legislates its own abortion code, uh, half the country will pass laws that ban almost all abortion, but they will differ significantly from each other, potentially. They'll go into effect at different times. There will be different state-based challenges to those laws. Um, and then, just as you mentioned, there will be other interventions that will test state resolve to prohibit abortion corporations, uh, funding employees to seek legal yeah, abortions I'm, I'm thinking elsewhere. About, I'm thinking about my home state of Missouri that, that banned abortion, uh, and they Democrats said, hey, look, this is going to cost you the governorship. All of a sudden, Missouri is going to go blue, and in fact, the governor uh, ended up winning re-election by a larger majority than he did uh, elections. Uh, Professor Reboucher, it's nice to see you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.